What's up, y'all? This is your boy Rampage Jackson and my co-host, my brother Bear Gio. I, I said it right this time. We got a very special guests. RDA, Rafael. What how you Rafael? Haf, oh, thank you. Rafael. <laughs> Dois anjos. God damn it. <laughs> Rafael de Jandres. Did I say that right? De Jandres. De, de Jandres. Dois anjos. Well, they, they, people just call you RDA for RDA, yeah. Is you, you 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 happy with that, RDA? Oh yeah, yeah. That was a, a, a nickname that the American fans came up with. And I like it a lot. Yeah. But how come you look Mexican, though? What's up with that? Is it the mustache? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think with the mustache, I look Mexican. But, yeah. Uh, first time I, I put the mustache on, on was a couple years ago. But I'm bringing the mustache back. Did you shave like that for a flavor saver? <laughs> you know what that is, though. <laughs> how, long you, how, long you been in, how long you been in America? Um, over 10 years. Oh, and, and you still don't know what a flavor it's, saver is. He's still learning, man. Bro. He's still learning all the jokes. Okay, you finna learn something today. <laughs> that looked like a flavor saver. You know <laughs> Flavor saver, I got now I got, got the it. job. <laughs> hey, sometimes after you get done, you be doing just no. Just say <laughs> Are you married? I'm married, yeah. What not? 15 years. Yeah, you can be married and have a flavor saver. <laughs> It's nothing bad about a flavor saver. <laughs> no, not at all. No, Thank not you. at all. All right. I like that. You don't got a flavor. I got a flavor saver, I guess. <laughs> you do? Well, you do like this. I got big lips, so I can do it. I can I can wrap my nips on top of my nose. Let me see. Oh, yeah. You do that? The girls like that? Hell no. They give me. Give nah, me. You, they like that, huh? They don't, they don't, they don't like that. I they don't, don't like that? Because I... Mind your business. But I'm just wondering, because you told me the girls like whenever you're like doing your thing, they like, they go, hey, Rampage, could you howl for me? And they like that when you do that in the room, right? Yeah, yeah. I howl when I'm done. Oh, when you're done. Oh, I thought you know. said they like it. Like when you howl, that means no. you're about to start. It's no, like a no, they, they know, they know when. You know about that, about him? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, so when he brings like a girl, like if he's dating and they're serious, only if they're serious, he, when he howls, they know that he's ready uh -huh, to mate. Uh -huh. He's in heat. Like don't, an don't, don't see, listen, no, it's a sign, don't, right? Yeah, yes, don't, don't, bro, don't, don't, don't listen to him. No, no, when you're in heat, you know, like men, the lions. Men, men don't come in heat. Only women come in heat. You come in heat or no? I, I once dated a girl named Heat. You're right. How you know that? He, he knows. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. You see why it's hard sometimes to talk MMA? Yeah, yeah. He, get, he gets sidetracked easily. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 okay, RDA. It's okay. You know, Bear, he always making he's always making fun of me because uh, never. He, you know, it's all it's all good, brother. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's kick this off off the break. Um, there's a big fight this weekend, and a lot of the people fighting this weekend you fought against. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about people you fought against. Just like Rampage, some of the biggest names in UFC and MMA history you fought against. So you have a, a crazy career. Not a lot of champions and not a lot of people who fight in the UFC or in MMA like Pride or Strike Force have ever been able to fight big names. You fought some of the biggest names, right? Like if you look at this, you have the most um, unanimous decision wins in, in, in UFC history, right? 11, you have the longest total fight time in UFC history. You have an insane list of opponents from Usman and Cerrone, Habib, Henderson, Diaz, Pettis, Ferguson, Alvarez, Lawler, Covington. Like, you fought some of the biggest names ever. Do you ever, do you ever like, look back at your career, like, even when you beat Anthony Pettis to win the UFC lightweight strap in 2015, do you ever look back at your career and, like, damn, who, who do I need to fight? Who, who haven't I fought? Yeah, I think uh, uh, for the past 10 years, uh, my level of competition has been really high. Uh, I see guys that, that, for example, I have 47 fights, professional fights, but uh, uh, it's not about how many fights I have, but who I face, you know, and, uh, and still be able to do this on the highest level these days. So my last fight I lost, but it was a you know, decision on a main event. So I'm still fighting for on, on main event. So uh, it's just a blast to be, you know, uh, uh, be fighting, competing on the highest level at, you know, 39 years old and 47 fights. Yeah. How, how long do you want to uh, continue fighting? I, I wanted to retire at 35, but then I saw a lot of people before me retire and then, you know, they regret it. They retired, they miss it and they came back. And I just like, I was like, wow, I don't want to be one of those guys that, that miss it and come back. I want to retire like when I'm done. Yeah, uh, I had a, I had a, in my mind, like, since on my 20s, 37 years old, like I said, I'm going to retire at 37. But when I got to that age, I felt like uh, I still had so much on me. It's, it's, not, it's not only about the money. Uh, I feel like when I get hurt, when I have some injury, 
how much I miss being in the gym. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, like, and making, you know, when I'm get like, 2021 was a tough year. I had two surgeries. And, start, you know, making me think a lot about, like, so do I really want to stop? And yeah, I, I say, no, I'm far from it. You know, it's still, it's still got a lot, a lot of me. And as, as we get older, you know, I start training uh, a smart way, you know. Yeah. I don't kill myself at the gym. I do five, six weeks fight camp. And then, and man, I'm good with it. You still doing five and six weeks at 39? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do five, six, and that's it. I don't do more than that. Wow. So, but I keep the water warm, you know. You know, I'm oh, yeah, always, always training. Gym, I'm yeah. always in the gym. I'm always taking care of myself and eating well, eating health, and then if I get a call within five, six weeks, I can jump in. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. I want 70, not 55. Oh, yeah. 55 oh, wow. is much harder. So and now I'm, I'll fight in March 9. So I'm starting already now. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the last time I think I saw you in the gym way before COVID was here in Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. You were training with Perillo and, and some of these guys out here. Did you still hold all your camps out here in California and then you just moved to Austin? Or where? how did that, what's the move? Or did you go to Brazil first? Yeah, I was for the past three years. I was in Brazil with uh, Andre Pedernes, uh, with Jose Aldo, all those guys, and so I love training with Andre. He's a type of coach that uh, he takes care of everything. You know, he's a he's a big father. You know, and I love training with him. But I was, you know, planning to move back to U.S. and I picked Austin to move, and I think it was a you know a perfect move. Uh, a lot of grapplers right there, over there, you know, but there's no, not much MMA. Yeah. Looking forward to go there and open my place. And uh, I've looked to the future, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to open a, a cafeteria or a mm -hmm. restaurant or anything to leave when I'm, when I'm, you know, when I'm retired. I know the finish line is closer than the start line, you know, I'm not looking to retire anytime soon, but I know it will happen one day and, uh, you know, I want to, martial arts has changed my life and I want to pass it, pass it along and teach people, change people's life as well. Oh, so you're going to open up a gym? Yeah, and yeah. You don't have one yet, though? No, I don't have one yet. It's hard to uh, own a gym and run a gym while you're still fighting. Yeah. I think a lot of fighters do that and I was like, man, that's You had one. Yeah, but it, I, I didn't open it. I let my um, friend, the, the guy who started me to fight, he wanted to open up a gym. This guy, if it wasn't for, for him, I wouldn't be here right now. And so whatever he asked me for, I, I would have gave it to him. He, whatever he need, you know. He he didn't he didn't even notice. Every time I talked to him, I told him thank you. Every time. I only think he noticed it. Every time I talked to him, we could be talking about anything, nothing to do with anything. At the end of, end of the conversation, I'm like, thank you. And I don't even think he noticed why I said that all the time. Every every day, every time I talked to him. The guy changed the guy changed my life. He 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 brought me out here. He he let me stay in, in, in his apartment with him and his wife, and he he uh, introduced me to Fabiano Iha, and you know got me to training and everything. And um, one day he wanted a gym. I was like, man, I hate the gym business. And he's like, I want to call it Rampage Fitness. I was like, no, I don't think you want to put my name on it. It was right after I got in that the accident with that big ass truck. I was <laughs> like, I was like, bro, that's not a good idea. Don't put my name on that gym. He did it anyway. I whatever he wanted. And then it, the gym, he just. He just abandoned the gym. I don't want to talk bad about him, but he yeah. abandoned the gym. I had to take it over. I, I didn't want to. I pulled up on you there one time. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to, and it was, it was hard fighting and trying to take care of gym. Yeah, I, I, I'm putting together, you know, a team. So I, so I be the name. You know, I go there, I do my fight camp, and uh, have my wife. She take care of the business. Have some other coaches. You know, jiu jitsu coach and Muay Thai coach. I'll put them to, to you know. That's to, smart. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm gonna just gonna be there. You know, training, give some compliments to the students, be around. You know. That's a smart way to do it. Not where you have to do all the heavy lifting oh, and yeah. all the paperwork, and because you want to just hard. focus and concentrate on your fight. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I, I. I don't know if you know, in Austin we, is the B team, Nikki Rod and the B team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've been going there with Craig. I oh, made wow, a connection with, I, I, you know, I, I text him on, on, on direct messenger. And I've been going there, man. Those guys are a different level when it comes to grappling, man. Really? I have, I have never, you know, grappled with guys as good as them. Did it's, you grapple with Nikki and Craig and Gordon's brother? Not, not with Nick, yeah, with, not with Nikki Rod. I, I didn't met him at the gym yet, but I, I, I grappled with his brother. He's a beast. 
And uh, J Rod, J Rod, J uh, and uh, what about uh, Gordon's little brother? Gordon's little Nikki brother, Ryan. Nikki Ryan. Yeah, man, all those guys, man, they a beast, man. What, what, makes, what, what makes you think? Uh, what, 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 what do you think makes their jujitsu so good? Why are these guys so? Is it the <clears throat> wrestling that they put with it? I don't know, man. They they learn wrestling. They they have a good wrestling background and they learn jujitsu. Uh, uh, <laughs> wrestling man, is one of the most complete sport, and this guy, they you know. Learn jiu-jitsu, they learn how to grapple, they learn how to cap positions, they strong, physically strong, and so hard, man. Guys, they are, they are good at wrestling, they learn jiu-jitsu, are very hard to do something with them. Yeah, I mean, it's Especially cool. Especially with Dao Gi, man, it's almost impossible, you know? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, one thing, we had uh, Nikki Rods, one of our athletes, and uh, he was in here, and he was telling me one of the most important things that the B team and him, like what they do better than anybody else is that they do a lot of a uh, position training. They don't mm -hmm. just do open mat training. And, and you know, a lot of the guys, they end up meeting in competition, whether it's the Brazilian guys or guys that maybe spend a lot of time in the gi. Uh, when they go, they do a lot of open mat training, open free time training, not position training. So by the time they get in a position when they're in tournament or competition in a match, you know, they're not, they're not familiar with it. And then all of a sudden they don't have the strength or the power to kind of like see it through. So. That yeah, especially be, yeah. I was I was in Brazil, like I wasn't training much grappling. So I don't have like when I'm getting ready for a fight, I don't have grappling as a, like, okay, I'm gonna do grappling two, three times a day. Mm -hmm. So I've been training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu since I was eight. So I'm 39. So I've been on the mats for a very long time. And when I have a MMA fight schedule, I usually do more sparring. The grappling that I do is during the sparring, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with them and make gloves and, and stuff like that. And going to Austin and going to, to the gym with, with guys like that on that level was like surprising to me, you know, mm -hmm. to see where the level is. Because in Brazil, I, you know, I see guys training, but I don't actually train with them. I do wrestling and but not much grappling and see that was was amazing to me. Yeah. In terms of Connor returning, I know you were supposed to fight him, right, a while back. And, yeah. and then, you know, obviously he's returning. Do you think he'll ever be the, the same fighter he was? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I think uh, uh, for him to hold the belt again will be pretty hard. He's a big star, you know. He man, he accomplished great things. But, yeah, he's going to make money he's still fighting, you know. He's, he's a big draw. But I don't think... Uh, um, like, I don't think he's totally off, like, off title conversations. Yeah. And Especially at 170, man. I don't think he's going to make 55 anymore. At 170, it's hard. Yeah, it's a big division. It is. It's, and those guys are pretty big walking around at 170, especially when they cut. Yeah. And, you know, they're showing up in the ring at 180, 185. What about, do you think your career would have been different if you would have fought him? Oh, yeah. I would, I would make good money that night. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely... But, you know, I can't complain, man, you know, uh, um, I can, you know, everything that I, you know, I ask for, I have. And, uh, of course, that would be a big payday. And, but I, I was just like mad, sad at that time because, not because of the money, but because uh, I didn't got to fight him. You know, that, that was the, that was my first time pulling out due injury. And then the way that it happened to, you know, there was a guy that was helping us at the gym. And I, I felt he, he kind of was mimicking Connor's style, but I find him really, you know, like desperate when he was training and he was putting me too much in risk. And at the time I, I went to Rafael Cordero and I told Rafa, let's don't bring this guy anymore. I don't feel like he's throwing like some crazy spinning you know, uh, uh, heel kicks. And I say, hey, man, I, I got to stay away from this type of guy. And he kind of put the guy aside. And last point, and then a month went by. And last point session, like before the fight, like 10 days out, 12 days out. And we were sparring. And the last round, and Rafael said, uh, everybody pick its opponent, its partner. Last round. And... Everybody pick its uh, its partner, and he was the only one left. I didn't want to be rude and say, "Hey, man, I don't want to spar with you." I just walk away, and but he was the only one left. And uh, and Hafa goes, "Okay, Hafa, go with him." And first kick it through, like it wasn't even hard. He checked my kick. I broke my foot. Oh, 
that was how it happened. Crazy, man. Yeah. But it is what it is, man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hate living and learn. Yeah, I, I hate I hate those type of um, sparring partners. I, I've had them. I think a lot of us, a, a, a lot of us fighters had them. I can't stand no type of. They seem like they got something to prove or something yeah. in the gym. It's not. It's not the time for that. For you, it's, it's only one more training, and for for the guys, like the championship belt. I, 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 you know, like now since that day, and now I learn and how to say no, how to stay away from these from these guys. But yeah, living and learning, man. You know, my problem is when I spar guys like that, I, I get mad and in the sparring, I lose my temper. And then a lot of times, if I don't get hurt by them, I hurt my fist or something because I'm now I'm trying to knock them out. Yeah. I look at uh, I look at a lot of the fights that we have, even like this weekend. Yesterday we were doing a lot of talk, me and Rampage, and we had um, Giga in here, and we were talking about the fighters and their style. And it's like Kobe and Leon. You have experience with these guys. Mm -hmm. um, what do you remember? Who do you, who do you think wins this fight? Oh man, I think um, like uh, Usman. He was beating uh, uh, Leon until the end of the you know until the fifth round. I think Kobe has um, uh, Kobe's pace is, is is better than Usman. You know, Kobe gonna push the pace and. Um, make it you know make the fight ugly he's gonna you know he's gonna uh, uh wrestle uh, uh leon edward all the time i think kobe has big chance of winning that fight um leon has a good elbows from the clinch you know like he he opened big gash on my eye with that elbow like every time get on a clinch when when he when he breaks a clinch he throw that elbow mm. he got a good time on that so Kobe has to be careful with that too. But I, if I would have to put my money, I'll put on Kobe. Wow. Mm, I I was kind of with Kobe on on that too. I I think that what you're saying is 100 percent correct. But I kind of hope Leon wins only because yeah, only because uh, Kobe um, said about his father. He crossed the line. He, he crossed the line. You agree? Yeah, right? yeah I agree totally. Yeah. Like I mean, I'm not. You're cheering for Kobe, I, mean, I just think he's gonna win. Right. But I don't think uh, he crossed the line, man. He, he even spoke about you know the other guy's wife too, and he was he just say, say too much dumb shit. Yeah, I mean, in terms of like fighting and press conferences, people are always like Rampage that people are always trying to sell fights, and people are always trying to figure out a way how to make the most hype. You know, McGregor obviously always borderline, almost you know went overboard, but he kind of did just enough to shut it down a little bit to make sure people are excited to fight. That seemed like a little bit like in terms of crossing the line, that's something that you probably don't need to sell tickets, right? Well, I'm sure Conor McGregor has crossed the line a few times, but yeah. I haven't seen I haven't seen all of Conor McGregor's press conference and stuff like that. I'm a fan of Conor McGregor. I'm a fan of you. I'm a fan of a, a lot of a lot of the fighters and stuff. And I was and I was a fan of uh Kobe, but um you know people don't don't play with that hell shit. Yeah. You know, that's, you don't say, you don't say that about anybody. I wouldn't say that about my worst enemies. Say, say me and Vanellay was at each other and he had a parent to pass away. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, yeah, I'm seeing you to hell with your dad. I, I, you don't, you don't do that. No, that's that. That was so low. Yeah. That was a low blow. What about, what about Usman? What do you think about his journey to 185? Do you think he, you know, how do you think he looked against Kamza? Like, do you think he has what it takes to, to, to kind of like, get back on his feet and be the Usman we once saw? Yeah, Usman, Usman is a beast, man. But I think, uh, I heard he has a lot of problems with his knees. Mm. And uh, yeah, 185, he's gonna need those knees a lot, you know? Mm. He's gotta, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty hard. I don't know if he's staying at 185. I think he's gonna get out to 170. But yeah, man, Usman, man, he's, he's a beast, former champion. He defended the title a bunch of times. And yeah, I think he has, you know, Kobe winning the title. If Kobe win, I think Usman, you know, got his number. Wow. Wow. That yeah. that could be that could be huge. Yeah. I like the way you say he he needs his knees like at the 185. Are you saying that because the guys are just so heavy he's not used to it? Because he's already a big guy. He's yeah. strong. He's big. He's strong as hell. Yeah. Yeah. I remember fighting him uh on it was a very it was I think it was during the pandemic. Not sure. No, it was a, it was before the pandemic, but it was in a, a small cage in Las Vegas. Uh, it was on the Palms Hotel. Mm. It was weird because it was on the you know we don't even need to get out of the hotel. Like 
the cage was on the on the on, you know on those like down the, the ground hotel, floor. yeah on yeah. the ground floor yeah and when we got them I look at the cage the cage was so small like I said how how you know how how come I gonna fight five rounds with this guy he's gonna try to out wrestle me all the time and I remember he threw a jab first jab on my arm man it was I couldn't even close open and close my hand it was numb for a while he just threw a jab. No, I'm during the fight or after the fight? During the fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I blocked his jab and he caught me right here. And man, I said, I feel that jab hits my face. Like he knocked out uh, Durin <laughs> with the <laughs> Gilbert Burns with a jab. Yeah. So he got some stiff jab. Yeah, and you're thinking about that the whole fight? Damn, I got to stay away from his I jab. I got to so, stay away so from So I already ruined your whole <laughs> That was on the first 30 yeah. seconds of the fight. God, how do, you, how do you get over that? Like your mindset, right? When a fight starts, he hits you with some... Man, you gotta. You, it's 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 like the hardest thing. You gotta be mentally mentally strong. I, when I fought Forrest uh, Griffin, he he did a, a calf kick, and I never even experienced that even in training. And he he injured my leg, <laughs> and my my leg was hurt really bad. And, and and I remember in the middle of the rounds, I had to go into a different place in my mind, and and block out the pain. To, to, to finish that the thing gets fight. gets gets your nerves in there man yeah. it's it's hell yeah i mean you you also fought tony ferguson in the prime of tony's career now he's on a uh, six fight i think a six six straight losses right yeah six fight straight loss yeah you never i never heard of that no, normally after two or three losses you get cut you get cut i never heard of a six yeah. fight uh lose streak. yeah me I, either I think his name is just so big because he was so dominant for so many years. He still has a name and he sells tickets. Oh, yeah, and I think yeah. it's a business. But do you think USC should, do you think they should have let him fight Patty the Batty? Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he still want to fight. I think he was coming, man, uh, 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 with a bunch of winning streak. And uh, I think he lost to, uh, uh, to Gagey. Mm -hmm. He took a beat. He got he got hit a lot, and then he lost to I think be, uh, Charles Oliveira, then Benio Darius, yeah, it was uh, a, it Chandler. Kept, it kept going, yeah. The Chandler yeah, fight was, was crazy. I, I don't, I'm not sure how many was by knockout. I think two was by knockout, mm -hmm. the one submission, the other was with decision. Yeah, like I thought, I thought he would get cut, but he has a big name, you know. But I think UFC gave him a gift, mm. Patty, Patty Pimblet. He's gonna be Patty Pimblet. I don't think. Really? He's, yeah, I think so. But Tony, Tony stuff. Really? And uh, even he's not. A, he's far from his prime. He he's way better fighter than Patty Pimblet now. Wow. I don't think he's gonna he's gonna lose to him. You don't think uh, Patty the Batty is ready yet to move up? To no, the not to the next level. I think. Uh, I think I can burn my tongue, but I think he he he's a type of guy that. Yeah, uh, UFC really want him to make it, but he's not gonna make it. Mm. I, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. feel like yeah. he's not gonna make it. And he's not coming the new a, He coming out for injury as well, too, right? A patty. These guys, they blew up and they get so fat after yeah. they get fight, and they have to cut. Fight, uh, Coach Pai will always say something. The fight is like a, a a candle. If you burn your candle too too fast, man, you're gonna run out of juice. Yeah, you know, like. But well, you said Coach Perillo. Yeah, Coach yeah, Perillo, yeah. one of the boxing coaches right here in, in, in Ruka, in, in right? Ruka yeah, yeah, in yeah. Costa Mesa, Newport. I know Ruka's done now, and uh, I think he's still training Cheeto because Cheeto has a title fight coming yeah. up. I just saw Cheeto and Luke and Perillo together. Was uh, was Perillo like your head coach, or was he just like your striking coach? Or? He was my head coach, yeah. Uh, when I fought Robbie Lawler, he was with me. Uh, Neil Magny. Uh, who else? Uh, when I fought for the title with Kobe. For the interim wow. title, he was with me too. Yeah, we, we we had a lot of fights together. That's amazing. And then, do you have a new fight camp when you went to Brazil? You have a new team, or? Yeah, I went with Andre Pedernares, same yeah. coach as Jose Aldo. Got it. And, and they come to the states with you? Yeah, no, they stay there. But like, when I have a fight schedule, I you know I'm gonna rent a house and bring some guys over. Oh, nice. You know, I have good, great grappling at B team, but not many MMA guys. And striking coach too. I'm gonna bring my striking coach and probably two or three guys to do sparring. That's it. Do you think it's important to mix the um, jujitsu with MMA guys or doing straight jujitsu sometimes? <laughs> I think uh, usually when I'm when I do when I'm off, I do like straight jujitsu. That's important. But when you have a fight and you have a date already, I think it's kind of 
you you get too much out of what you need. Mm. And I, when I, when a fight goes on, and I, after the fight, and when I like to train with Gi a lot, mm. I do like because he refine you. You know, you get a better techniques versus because you can't scramble too much mm. with Gi. You know, and then you kind of do the right techniques. Mm. When I'm not, when I don't have a fight coming up, I usually train with Gi and to refine my techniques. But when I have a date, I just do like what I need, what needs to be done. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the the list of people you face, all absolute legends. Who do you think overall was the was the best fighter you you've been in the cage with? Um I have a guy that I was actually scared to fight. He was Robbie Lawler, man. Oh. I was I was scared to fight that guy, you know. Uh I think he was one of the toughest fights. He and Usman too. And yeah, he and Usman was the toughest guy that I fought. Man, Robbie Lawler has had a long career. I I was so shocked that he lasted that long in the sport. It's over twenty five years. Am I am yeah. I wrong? No, yeah, yeah, yeah long yeah, time. Yeah. I think twenty plus for sure. I think he was fighting before I was. I think he was fighting yeah. before I was. I mean, I saw a post. I think it was almost two decades. So like, yeah. yeah. So I mean, in terms of being scared of him though, because like everybody knows who he is, right? Like, what were you so scared about? Man, I, I, like his hands. He got a heavy hands. And um, calf, calf kick saved me. You know, I start calf kicking him. He's a softball too, and you know his lead leg was there. I say, man, I gotta kill this guy's leg. So I, I you know, I, 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 you know, he, he's not gonna have hands to, to touch me. So if he doesn't have the legs, he's gonna be hard to connect punches, and that was exactly what happened. That was the game plan in training. Yeah, that was a game plan. Calf kicks. Calf. My coach didn't like much when I was calf and kick. He goes, no, man, we're going to break your foot. Don't do that. But he was working really well at the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, I was even with the shin pads. I was calf kick people and they were leaping, you know, right away. And, I hate that kick. <laughs> <laughs> and I got good timing to do that. So I said, hey, man, that's going to be the plan. And first kick it through on him. I think he, he kind of. You know, like I, I could feel he felt the kicks and I kept kicking him until the fifth. You know, the weird thing is, I've, I've said this before, but I forgot about that that calf kick. And I talked about what Forrest did. You know, in the fight, you, you don't feel much when you're drilling and going, but you feel that calf kick, you'll, you'll feel, and I heard you feel body shots. Yeah. And, and I felt the, the kick to the to the thigh. You feel you feel those but other things you really don't feel. Like when you're fighting and you get punched in the face and you get, do you feel the pain like right there and there? You don't feel No, it. no. But the calf kick, you'll calf feel Calf kicks that. and body kicks. I wonder why the, why the calf kick, and, oh, and the body kicks, huh? Body kicks, yeah. body, you know, body shots, you feel right away. Because the organs there. Oh, uh, yeah. But what's the, what's up with the calf kick? Is it the nerve or something? I think it's the nerve, man. It kills right on your nerves and compress all those nerves and you can't even walk. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a, I think it's a different level of like how you said adrenaline, like today, Obviously, I've never been in a fight, but I was training, messing around with Luke Rockhold, and I barely touched him. Like, I didn't even do anything. I just was, like, saying hi almost. And he hit me, and for a second, I was like, oh, that didn't even hurt. And, like, 10 seconds later, <laughs> like, I literally took one foot, and everybody was, like, kind of walking away so there wasn't so many people around us, and I, like, almost collapsed. Did you, do you, do you, if you follow him, you see he was training with uh, Luke, mm -hmm. and Luke took him down and was wrestling, and Luke T, uh, Luke T bagged him. And he and he's <laughs> and he still posts. I wouldn't have posted it. I, if I got tea bagged by a professional fighter, I wouldn't post it. Listen, every day I he didn't see that. Yeah, thank you. Don't watch it. Every day he makes me spark. <laughs> Nikki Rod was in here yesterday. He was trying to show me some technique, and I'm like, bro, it's so hard to learn technique because you're so good. I need someone to do it on. I can't do it on you. You're like uh -huh. six foot five, three hundred pounds. Like, what am I gonna do to you? You know, I'm still learning. But I, I get you on the adrenaline thing. Because it is crazy. Like when people are in here and I watch them spar, I'm like, damn, how's that not hurting you? Or, you know, Coach Bobby was in here the other day. We had the 130 pound WBO champion, Joseph Diaz Jr. And we did some sparring rounds and he's trying to show me what to do. I'm like, bro, there's no way that I could ever do like a real round with these guys. At one punch, I'm done. Yeah, man. Especially if you if you get a, you know, a, a kick on the nuts or something, you oh, feel yeah. right away. There's, oh, there's oh. no adrenaline that, yeah, you yeah. know. You've been kicking the nuts? Oh, yeah, I've been oh, kicking man. the nuts. I don't train with a cup on most times. <laughs> really? Uh, even me spark. too, me too. I don't, I don't like cups, but yeah. only for a fight. Yeah, only for a fight. Oh, but for a fight, you wear a cup? Yeah, but uh, sometimes when I train with Congo, I, I put a cup on sometimes because he's been known to knee you in the nuts. Really? In training? In training. Why? He just, just, 
Is this what he does? Sometimes he makes he makes a mistake and he'll knee you in the nuts. Damn. He's doing like the Muay, he does the Muay Thai like knee. Clinch. Yeah, he do the clinch yeah. you and knee you in the stomach. And he and I don't know. He's so tall. I don't know why his his knee is down there by my nuts. But he <laughs> Congo has Congo has need me over the years. Congo Congo has need me in the nuts uh, at least a dozen times. <laughs> Oh, man. man, it's terrible. I mean, at that point, no, no more sparring with him. Man, it makes you better, though. Congo, Congo made me a better fighter. Training with, with Congo. He's out there in Austin with, uh -huh. with you. He's, it, made, it made me a better fighter training with, with Chet Congo. So yeah. you got to do it. He's another legend. That fight he had with... Um, uh, what's Pat to Barry. Yeah, with Pat Barry. Oh, my God. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, a good and, and he came back from the dead. That was like, that's like one of the most viral uh, UFC oh, clips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got over 100 million views. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I was eating dinner with Pat Berry and Rose and everybody, and, and I was watching the video. He's like, no, we're good. We don't need to watch it. <laughs> why, are you, why are you watching that? Why are you watching that with because, Pat Berry, though? Because it's the most viral video clip, and I, but, ne I never, I was like, yo, it's kind of cool. I'll watch it while you're sitting here. No, no. He's don't, a legend. I know, but don't do that. Like, sometimes we be having guys here, and he be interviewing. I know, like, it's an interview, and, you know, you want to ask a whole lot of things, but a lot of times he be bringing up, you know, fighters' losses and stuff. I don't like doing that. I don't like, I don't want to talk like, about, the, I want to talk about the fights you won. I want to, but he wants to, he's like a journalist. He wants to know everything. I, I, I'm sitting and get to know you. I look at you like a fan. I'm going to learn about you and stuff. I don't he, it's hard. I don't want to talk about people's losses. I don't like when people talk about, about my loss. I'm okay with it, but yeah. then sometimes I get to thinking about it. Then later on that night, I'm in the shower, sitting down, it's crying, like, yeah, you know, thinking about remember, my, get Yeah, mad. yeah, you get mad. I only do it out of a place of respect because the MMA community wants to know kind of what you were going through. They, a lot of these guys like yourself, you're a UFC legend. You know, you fought some of the best people in the world, but you don't do that many interviews. You're not always on podcasts. So sometimes when we do have people here, like I, I haven't seen Mashida on a podcast in years and then you see him, it's like, the, the MMA fans and the people following our Jackson podcast, they already leave comments, what they want to hear, questions they want to ask. Uh, so. And his first question to him was, how was it when John Jones got you in the, <laughs> the guillotine? I was like, come on. Really? Bro. Yeah, the first, <laughs> oh, the first question. That, come was, out terrible. Of, that was, was terrible. That was terrible. But, I, you know, you got to start it off with a bang. You, you have an upcoming fight against Gamera, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's all set in stone. Everything's good, right? I'll get you go. And that's in March? March 9th. Same day as Chiro and the... Uh, yep. Uh, O'Malley. Yeah, we saw them at the press conference, right? They were doing some press. Mm -hmm. um, what What do you think about this guy's career so far? His last fight, like, what do you, What do you think about him as you're getting ready to prepare for battle? <laughs> yeah, I kind of promised myself that I will not make 55 anymore unless it was a, a big fight. But you know, I, I like the challenge. You know, I like the challenge, and I think he was on on the, the last title fight. He was there making weight as a backup. And so it means that he was a step from the title, right? right? And fighting him and beating him will, will, will make me really close to that title shot. And especially having the history that I have with Slan already. We had a couple of fights uh, cancel. Uh, uh, like I think we were scheduled to fight three times. Wow. And uh, first fight, I got COVID. I couldn't make to Abu Dhabi. They rescheduled the fight for three weeks later mm. in Las Vegas. Islam pulled out on a fight week on mm. Tuesday. He didn't say why. Paul felt the jump in. And then we got rescheduled and I tore my meniscus. Oh. Yeah. And then I had a surgery and he said I fake it, but I can't fake a surgery. Like, <laughs> he, he, he didn't show why he pulled out on the fight week, mm. but... And then later on, I was scheduled to fight Fiziv. Fiziv got COVID on fight week. Like, mm -hmm. I think two weeks later, he couldn't make it to the fight. And Islan said he offered to fight at 170. And I said, okay, done deal. I went to bed, done deal. We spoke to Dana, and then I said, okay, done deal. Islan gonna, you know, you guys gonna fight at 170. I went to bed, slept. Wake up next day, make a big sandwich, boy, now to have a breakfast. By the time I was about to, you know, since it was a, a, a weight class above, and by the time I was about to eat my breakfast and my manager come down and some other guys come screaming, don't eat, don't eat, don't eat. He's going to pull out. He's not going to fight to you. So he ran away again. So we have a history. Beating Ganrod. Big, big chance to fight Sloan. 
What'd you do with your breakfast? Huh? What did you do I with your breakfast? Eat. <laughs> you threw it away? I didn't eat because you, I was been, 155 is so hard for me. I was yeah. 180, like, you know, so waiting to start a big cut. And you made the breakfast yourself. Did it. And you just, I would have been. Did it. I, I would be pissed. I, was I, pissed. I'd be, I was pissed, man, because it was a big sandwich <laughs> and I didn't eat, man. What, what, it was a breakfast sandwich? Yeah, it was like, you know. Turkey, cheese, a big one, man. You know, <laughs> got everything that I had on the freezer put on that thing. <laughs> then I had to abandon my... my I would have threw it at my man's <laughs> face. <laughs> that was crazy, man. I mean, do you, do you think that there's anyone who can give Islam a mock a run for his money? You know? Is there anybody right now that he should be fighting then? Mm. Is he running from anyone? I mean, he's already talking about fight, you know, uh, on on the division above him, fighting Kobe, but it, he got so many good guys that were a lightweight to, 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 you know, mm -hmm. to, to think of, not change division. Man, he, he has defended his title once, you know? I don't think he, he, he deserved to, you know, move weight and move weight above and, and mix it up with the whole thing. One of the craziest things is for like the last 20 years, I don't think you've ever uh, lost a fight via submission, right? Yeah, how have you kept this strike, this streak alive for so many years? <clears throat> yeah, uh, um, I hasn't. You know, I was. I'm very competitive at the gym, and uh, and I haven't. Ha I have have not tapped in the gym for for a while, but I tap at beat team a couple of times. <laughs> That's why I was impressed with those guys. They're oh. really good, man. You know, I, you know, I I always protect myself well. I got a good technique on the ground. Yeah, but man, when I went there and those kids, man, they a different level. So, but I know how to defend myself well, you know, yeah. especially in an MMA fight, MMA fight that I can explode and stand up and get, get away from bad position. Yeah. You don't have a big ego about tapping. Not you? at all. If, if I had, I would never go to the gym, you know, at 39 years old, bunch of young kids, you know, like, I don't care. I just go there yeah. and try to learn. That says a lot about him. I, I know... Some fighters, they could be training for a fight in a training camp. Somebody get them in something and they won't tap. They get hurt. Even got a fight. I'm like, Mayhem Miller was like that. I'm like, bro, why? Why would you be like that? I, I've I've seen him get his arm hyperextended like uh, maybe like three weeks before one of his fights. He said, I don't, I didn't want to tap. I'm like, bro, you know, you're training for a fight. That's the that's the big picture you know some people just have big egos about it yeah, yeah. i mean i i don't care about that like i mean uh uh if you get me especially like heel hooks knee you know knee locks stuff like that leg locks i it's not worth it yeah. no i don't even let you get close if i see if you if you're gonna get it i tap right away I don't, is, is it a uh unspoken rule like in um brazil like you don't tap and tell mm. Uh, people doing that, they tapping it. You know how people in the gym say, hey, did you tap him out? You know, because I remember when I was training well, with a lot of my Brazilian friends and 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 I, you know, I didn't know. I asked them, hey, have you ever tapped them? And they won't say nothing. Like, you know. Yeah, it's, it's you can like, is that a, I mean, it's a, it's a rule. Like, I mean, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that you don't talk about training, how many times you'll tap the people, you know. Got it. Unless a guy comes to your gym and you never see him and he comes to do a visit. Yeah, that's that, that's. I mean, yeah. uh, he's a visitor. Like, come to, he just yeah. comes to test himself, you know, yeah. and and we got we make sure we give him good treatment. Oh. <laughs> but but it's a respect. It's a respect. Yeah. If you know yeah. the guy, you don't yeah, talk. Yeah, about yeah. Him. yeah. No, that's no. cool. I yeah. like that. I like yeah. the way you said it too. It's mm -hmm. actually very nice the way you said it. Yeah. Kind of very respectful. You should yeah. learn from that. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm yeah. learning. Yeah. Very nice. Instead of saying, I, "Hey, bear, if you come out here, I'm going to kill you." That's no, a better way. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't tap a tail either. <laughs> uh, who do you think uh, some of the most you know who do you think in your opinion is like the most overhyped fighter right now in the UFC it seems like the UFC has a lot of hype around fighters that maybe aren't as skilled as the UFC is trying to make them seem who do you think is the most overhyped fighter first guy that came to my mind is Patty Pimlet wow he's he's he lost that fight, his last fight, I think, against Jerry Gordon I forgot about that it was yeah. it was a very close fight and in my eyes, he lost that fight. Why do you think they gave it to him? Is they they're trying to push him? Oh yeah, man, it's a uh, he's a uh, it's a big market in Europe, right? England, I think it, it's business, you know. Like, but we, we can't understand this this judge too, man. I see some terrible judging, you know. Uh, uh, 
for example, my fight against Paul Felder, they gave, uh, one of the refs gave Paul Felder a round. And he, even, he, it was a kind of like a split decision. And even he said, hey, man, I didn't want to, I, even, I, I didn't got close to win a round against you, but I don't know how they get. And we see that all the time. Yeah. It's kind of cool how, how at least the fighters can have respect for each other if they know they didn't win. Well, well, not all fighters are like that, though. No, no. no. Some fighters, they take it, 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 it any, any way they can, you know. They, they'll do it. It's, mm-hmm. I, I have a lot of honor when I fight. I want to I wanna beat the guy at his best, and I know, you know, I'm at his best. I'm, I'm at my best. I, I don't like that. I, yeah. When I fought um, Ninja, mm-hmm. I thought I thought he won the fight uh, before I watched it. You know, you, it's sometimes mm-hmm. a close fight. You have to go out and watch it, and and I try to give him the trophy in pride. He was like, "No, nah. really? like, that was stupid to me trying. Why? why? <laughs> well, what was he going to do? You go take the trophy, make him look bad. But I didn't. I didn't think about that. But yeah. I always respect a, a fighter that no. No, they didn't. They didn't win. Like um, when I fought Forrest, at, at, when I lost the, the, I lost my belt, and I thought he won. They gave it to him. I thought he won. Did I won. Watch that fight. I was like, there's no way he won that yeah. fight. And, and and I was mad at him because he never because he never said that. Yeah, you know what? I really didn't win that fight. Yeah, I mean that's hard for someone to win a belt and then to come out and say, hey, I didn't win the fight when they have the belt now. You well, still, you still, you know, I would have if I would have watched if I would have lost a fight. And they gave gave it to me. I went back and I watched it. I'm like, man, I, I got my ass kicked. I, I would say it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, you guys are also cut from a, a different cloth. I mean, this guy's a living legend. The way he's been fighting and how you've been able to keep your body in such good shape and re- recovery and how professional and disciplined you are for years. I've been watching you train here, and uh, same thing. I feel like the way you train and the way you operate, even the way you talk about it. I mean, the fans can see it. You know, like, oh, if I'm getting close. I see they get a leg lock. I know Nikki and those guys love leg locks and heel locks. There, and they, they take it easy on me because I, I, I'm tra- I've been training with uh, wrestling shoes. Oh, you know, yeah. because I got something on my toe that I still like it's not 100 percent yet. I hurt my toe right before my last fight in July, and I had some corti- corticoids inject yeah. on it so I couldn't make it to the fight and it's still not 100% but I, you know with the wrestling shoes I'm able to protect it and roll like do everything that I need to do but even with the wrestling shoes like they don't go for foot locks which which would be way easier for them to catch me on the leg damn they're that respectful huh? and they like they man they're super cool man I love that's awesome guys. to hear really that people cool. talk good about them yeah. I like that because obviously we know them but it's good to see that other guys have good yeah and I went them. there and I felt like home all the guys pretty cool with me and very respectful giving me good training hard training and but still like being very respectful that's cool you think I, you think I can submit um, Nicky Rod you think I can take him <laughs> I think so <laughs> <laughs> look on his face <laughs> Let's do that. We do those rules. We start on the own bar already, right? <laughs> oh my God. I think so. Oh man, I, I, com- I compete. I compete with Seroni on that. Yeah. That was weird. Those rules that uh, uh, that submission only, and if, if nobody gets nobody, start on the own bar. It was, it was, yeah, we start with the own bar on. Like it was weird, and uh, yeah. yeah, he caught me on the own bar. And I couldn't catch him, and he won the fight. Which is oh, kind of weird. is this in the gym? I mean, no, no, it's on the tournament. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't you don't you ever heard about those rules? No, I yeah. never heard they, about that they rule. Start, they started with the umbar on. That was weird. But umbar with them on their back, or you yeah, on your back? Yeah, the guy lie down, uh-huh. and you get the umbar. Oh. But he connects the hands. Oh. Uh, when the ref say goes, and if you last, for example, twenty seconds, mm-hmm. and I last ten seconds, you win because you know you I last should, longer. I should show I should show you my my trick, and you will probably almost never get unbarred again from that. Uh, yeah, okay. I, for, I, I, for, I'm not a jujitsu <laughs> guy, but but the only times I ever been submitted in, in a fight or even in the gym is like rear naked choke. I need somebody to show me how to get out of that. But unbars and and power bombs. Uh, I mean, Omar, on bars and triangle chokes. <laughs> I saw. I remember yeah. Ricardo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, 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 that's just one of my. That's one of my tricks. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and the on bar. Well, well, my strategy is is I put I make them kiss their knee. Kind of fold like them up, them over. And, yeah. then, and then it's hard for them. It's hard for them to get the on bar when oh, yeah. when they're on their back. 
but uh-huh. you have to be extremely strong, bro. And no, no, you just put your you just, just yeah, put your weight over. Yeah. That's that's an old school defense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then if you you make them you make them kiss you make them kiss their knee, and then what I do I take my opposite arm and I put it across their their neck. I put my forearm in their neck and I grab their shoulder. Yeah. Then I just pass the guard. So I got so good at that that um I would I would give people the arm bar or the triangle to choke get out. just just to pass their guard because I suck at jujitsu, but I was really good at defense. That's what I practice all the we years. Call, we call that a masapão, which is like smash the bread. Oh wow! Yeah, you yeah. give the outside arm and yeah. smash. Yeah. Yeah, and when I when I fought um, uh, Marilla Busamonte, I, I in pride I fought him in pride and I uh, invented my own defense to the uh, guillotine choke right there in the fight. What really is good? He got a, but like his legs. He's kind of skinny. Yeah. Good triangles. Good guillotine. Bro, he very tactical. He all he almost um, tapped me out. That fight, I, I I probably wouldn't have tapped out. I probably would have went to sleep. I always say I'm against um, go, getting put to sleep. I, I don't mind tapping. You know, I don't have I don't have any ego with that. I would just tap out, right? But that that fight was was in the Grand Prix, the Pride Grand Prix. That was the first round. So you have one fight that night, and then if you win, you go and you fight two times that night. That's the time I fought Chuck Liddell and Vanellay the same night. And, <laughs> and That's crazy. It's crazy, right? And, and so <laughs> I, was supposed to, I was supposed to fight uh, Ricardo Arona, but he pulled out last minute. I didn't find out until I got to Japan that I was fighting Marilla Busamonte. I was like, man, you know, this guy's just as good or even better at jiu-jitsu than, than oh, yeah, R- yeah, yeah. Ricardo. And I didn't... I didn't know what to do, so I was. He had me in the guillotine, and I was about to. I was about to. I couldn't get out. It was a really tight guillotine. I was about to tap out, and I heard my coach and like, "Don't give up! Don't give up! You better not give up! Get out of that! Get out of that!" Because he's so quiet there. Uh-huh. I heard everything he said, and, and just the energy in his voice. He he would have been. He calling on Yama, man. He's hard as he is. you lose the fight. He talked mad shit about you. If you lose, he he wasn't like, oh, he don't baby you. If you lose, he talking man, you a piece of shit. What the fuck wrong with you? You could have did, did that. I'm like, and you don't want to hear that. Oh yeah. And 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 right then, right then and there, I invented something to get out of the guillotine, and I've never been guillotine again since that. In the heat of it. In the, in the heat, heat of it. I was like, man, I got to get out of this, and I just, I, I just, what is that? I just put my 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 left arm wrist deep in, in in his in his arm like this, and I just I just grab you know under under the the, the judges can't see the fingers. You, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to cheat. I didn't want to cheat, but I, I didn't grab one. You can't grab one finger, but I grabbed all Two, his, yeah. yeah, I grabbed all his fingers, like all four of them. And I just pushed and pulled at the same time. And I got out. I was like, oh my God, I'm out of, I'm, I'm out of this. I never seen anybody else do it. So I like to say I invented that. <laughs> yeah, take that one. You got to name it though. I uh, know, but you know, not a lot of people know. I taught it, I taught it to my son and I taught it to a couple other people, but I don't know if they do it. Yeah. In terms of like, you were obviously a very heavy hitter. We talked about this before the podcast, the way you would come in and kind of strike and you had, you had very heavy hands. So it's easy for you to kind of throw those. Who's, who's one of the heaviest hands that you've had to go against? You think? Um, Robbie Lawler, Usman. Uh, he knocked me out in the first fight. My, my first UFC fight, Jeremy Stevens. He got a really good head. Jer- Jeremy Stevens. Yeah, he's out in San Diego, I think. Mm-hmm. He was my first UFC fight, and I got knocked out. Not many times I got knocked, like, completely out. He got me out. That was your first uh, MMA fight? First UFC fight. Our first UFC fight. It was my 13th fight. Oh, yeah. wow. Right on, the, right on the beginning, you know. I thought I would get cut right on that fight, and I was really, you know, everybody would say, hey, man, if you lose, you're going to get cut. You're going to get cut. And I lost. And I lost a fight after that too against Tyson Griffin. Mm-hmm. But it was a fight of the night. I remember getting out of the cage and then I grabbed him and kissed me on the head. What a great job, kid. I love it. But I lost the fight decision. And we 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 get we 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 win the fight the of the night bonus. Wow, yeah. And wow. and I thought they would cut they would cut me, but they still gave me another chance and I won my first fight. That's amazing. Yeah. So Dana, Dana White came up to you after oh, you yeah. lost your second fight. Yeah, I was right going, right, you know, get, getting down the stairs, and he grabbed me. What a great job, kid. And he kissed me on the head. I never heard of Dana kissing anybody yeah. on the yeah. head. Me either. That's yeah. amazing. My, my, even my, my coach would say, hey, man, that kiss going to keep you on the show. I don't think you're going to get cut. <laughs> you, did, you, did you go on? Did you wash your head that night? <laughs> <laughs> I'm never washing my head again. Like, I'm about to make money now. <laughs> That's good. I mean, obviously having a good relationship with the, the owner of the, the organization yeah. is always helpful, right? You have a good relationship with Dana White? I do, man. Everything, you know, even last year, 
after my, I lost a fight against Fiziv. I still had three fights under my contract, but I wasn't super happy with my contract. And I called Dana and said, hey, Dana, I would like to renegotiate the last three fights on my contract. I want to do my three fights and be done. And, and he gave me an extra eight fights and paid me what I want. Wow. So I'm really happy. They t he took really good care of me. Wow. And I, you know, I was planning here. I don't, I don't want to, I'm not looking forward to get out of UFC and fight for another promotion. That's not what I want. You know, um, I don't want to fight boxing. Don't have no, maybe, you know, but. Later, later. Later. But yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to fight for all the MMA promotion. And that's what I explained to him and say, I want to, when I'm done, I want to be done with UFC and took really good care of me. I'm happy with how much I'm making now. So six more fights. I did two. I want to, <laughs> I want to finish my contract. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's cool to hear about the relationship with the UFC because you have so much pride in it, but also to the UFC taking care of someone that they, you know, he helped build this organization too. He's taken some of the best fights we've seen in the UFC, you know, it's cool to hear that. Do you, uh, now that obviously your, your contract is what you like, do you collect watches? I see you have a, a nice piece on. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I don't collect. I bought this one for me last year. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a rare Star piece. Starbucks, hard the to Hulk, get. yeah, yeah, I the Hulk. That. I like that a lot, and uh, I have another one that I, when I won the title, uh, a good friend of mine, Chatri, he's uh, the owner of One FC in Singapore. He gave me another one nice too, with my name engraved on it. Wow! wow. To try yeah. to get you to go to one. Uh, <laughs> that was when I won my UFC title. Yeah, yeah, oh, like wow. back in 2015, and I was. Uh, uh, even on my way to the title uh, on UFC, every time, you know, every time he takes me to Singapore, I was spending like three, four months in there yeah. training Muay Thai. So that's how I, I improve a lot my Muay Thai too, being there with those Thai guys and it helped me a lot. Wow, that's cool. And this guy, he helped me a lot, man. Like, you know, uh, uh, Chachi, we have a good relationship. Uh, and... Beginning of my career, he helped me move out to the United States and uh, oh. he supported me on the beginning. Have a big respect for him. Did he already own one at the time? No. No. No, only Evolve MMA. Oh, wow. Was he trying to get you to go to one when he started one? Maybe, but Maybe, you know, yeah. I was like very solidifying UFC and yeah. he wow. knew my intentions to be in UFC. That's awesome. And obviously, you want to end your career in the UFC, you have a ton of fights left on your deal. Um, is there any wish list for matchups for UFC 300? Uh, oh man, we'll see. I I heard uh, Nick Diaz and George Saint Pierre who could be on the on that card. That would be nice. Is Nick that, is that Diaz true? And George Saint Pierre on UFC that's 300. What, that's what I heard. That's true. That's, I, you don't know is this. I don't know. I He's don't know. Mr. UFC, bro. He gets kissed on the I head know, by Dana. Yes, by, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be cool to watch that fight. You know, I asked Dana um, to put me on UFC 100. I wanted to be on UFC 100. And he, 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 not only did he not kiss me on my head, he was, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Wait. fight in the UFC 100. Wait, George St. Pierre could potentially come and fight Nate Diaz at UFC 300? No, no, Nick. Oh, Nick, Nick. Diaz. That's be huge to fight on. Nick. You going to fight on UFC 300? No, I'll go on 299. Oh, oh you don't want 300? Yeah, that was what they offer me, and they want to fight soon. Again. Man, I would like to. I would like to uh, fight on UFC 300. Insane. Uh, That's in the sphere, right? Uh, I think so. That's gonna be in yeah. the Las Vegas sphere. No, is it the one before the sphere? The sphere is next time. I'm to Cinco de Mayo. No, like later in the year. Oh, got it. Wow. Yeah, Cinco, Cinco de Mayo will be at this sphere. Cinco de Mayo is not Mexican Independence Day. What's Mexican Independence Day? It's not Cinco. It's not Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. You can't speak on that? <laughs> what, so is it Cinco de Mayo or Mexican Independence Day? It's Mexican Independence Day. What oh, date, what's, what's the date? What's, what's that date? Like later in the year. What, what, what's the date, though? Later in the year. Like, you don't know? Where's Vinny? Where's, Someone get Vinny, dude. Where's Vinny? <laughs> uh, fear, fear Day UFC. Hold on. Is it Mexican Independence Day or not? I need to know, actually, because... I thought Cinco de Mayo was always Mexican Independent Day, but my friend told me it's, it's not Mexican Yeah, my son told me, too, it's not. It's like yeah. a... It's a it's, yeah. That's a day of a, of, of a battle or something like no, that, yeah. but it's not... Cinco de Mayo is different from Mexican Independence Day because yeah. Mexican Independence Day is in September. 
says September 14th is Mexican Independence Day or Mexican yeah. Independence Weekend. Yeah. But Cinco de Mayo is obviously May 5th. So I don't Cinco know. de Mayo is just a day you go and get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. That's why I want to know. Is it in May or is it in September? But, I mean, because if it's in May, then that's enough time for you to fight, right? In May, right? right. Uh, March, May, yeah. Two months later, finishing that fight quick. Yeah, maybe. All right, once we, once we get that solidified, then maybe I'll send you a text and we'll, get, we'll, we'll, oh, put yeah. that, we'll post that in the comments later. Before we let you go, I got, I got two things. A lot of people want to know, when you fought Pettis, obviously you won the strap. It was 2015. And then you got a, a win over Nate Diaz and you have a win over Benson Henderson. You, you know, then you have the Cerrone win. Like you have a lot of great wins and then you have a, some losses. Obviously, we don't need to talk about them, but against <laughs> insane names. <laughs> against insane names, though, you know? Because most UFC fighters towards the end of their career, when they start doing media and talk and when we've been having people on here, they don't fight crazy fights you know maybe they get one or two that the ufc uses to promote another fighter but it's mainly not good fights right but it seems like every fight you're fighting a, a top legend or a top name what what was your your best fight of all time uh i think it, well, well the fight that comes on my mind right away is i get was a fight against Paris, the title fight man uh, it was a special moment for me because <clears throat> uh, uh, i was man i did Five fights in eleven months until the title fight. Wow! It was it was a back to back. Uh, I fought Khabib and Jason High, Ben Henderson, Nate Diaz, and when I fought Nate, it was like in a eight months period, and all these three, four fights. And I was like, after the fight against Nate, I say I'm done. I need a six good six months recovery, and the way uh, we were in the press conference and. Uh, some of the reporters asked something to Dana and uh, kind of put him on the corner to say who is the next on the title. But I think Pettis has texted Dana asking to fight me. Mm. And, and Dana said on that press conference, okay, RDA is next. And they gave me, that was in December, and they gave him March 5th, 15th, to fight Pettis. So I went back home, got like some rest, and Saw fight camp already. Let's do it. And there was 11 months. There was a, I was, and then I tore my MCL 70%, like two weeks before. All my uh, cutting weight, walking at night, you know, like couldn't do any sparring, any training, just bike and walking to cut weight. It was pretty hard. And, and, um, and I still went there and did it. Damn. That's determination. Damn. You won the strap with a torn MCL. Oh yeah, uh, it was funny because I heard I heard my 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 MCL on the on a Friday, two weeks before the fight, and I was uh, because usually at Kings MMA sparring was on Fridays, and I couldn't even go up the stair on my house, and uh, I went downstairs. I said, "Hey," and I always have a habit to when I have to to take a, a decision in my life. I always get on my knees and do my prayers, and I open my Bible on a random page. You know, my mom taught me that. And I open my Bible on a random page, and uh, I put my finger there, and there's the response. And this night, I, I went down to call, at the, at the time, Ali, Ali Abdelaziz, he was my manager. I said, hey, I'm gonna call, and I'm gonna call the fight, man, can't make it. Can't even go upstairs on my house. And uh, I went on my knees and I pray. I opened my Bible and um, my finger went on um, Ezekiel 37. It said that God, uh, he, he, he raised an army on the, on the dry bones and he created uh, tendons and, uh, and blood and, and muscle on, the, on all those uh, uh, bones, right? And my eye went on that passage. Say, hey, if he God did that, he can heal my knee. And I said, I'm not gonna call the fight. I'm gonna fight. And I made all the way to the fight. And man, I fought five rounds. I couldn't feel anything on my knee. It's crazy. I couldn't feel nothing. Like even on the warm up, I was warming up, like pretty much using one leg. But yeah, man, I made to the fight. And after the fight, I was in so much pain. 
<laughs> but during the fight, I didn't feel anything. You want to get surgery right after your fight? No, there was there was a surgery required because MCL mm. is just like rest and don't do anything sideways. Always like straight bikes yeah. and all of that. Mm. It took me five months, four or five months to recover. Mm. Wow, that's yeah. powerful. That's powerful, brother. That's good, man. Yeah. yeah, I had so many experience with the Lord, but that that one it, it, it's it's on my mind always. Well, he's definitely been protecting you for you to have such a successful oh, yeah. career and, and you've been fighting for so many years. We hope to watch you continue fighting these big fights. You're always an exciting fight to watch. I also want to say thank you for coming on. Thank you for we having had, me. We had to get you in here. It's been a minute since I've seen you. I used to love watching you train at the gym and watching you and Perillo. And obviously it's an honor to sit here and watch, you know, two champions talk to each other. I think the MMA community is going to love this one, especially to hear from you more. I think it's cool because they watch you go to battle, but I don't think they get to hear from you too much, you know? Yeah. Yeah, respect. Thank you for coming in and Thank sharing you. this with us. Man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You the man. All right, y'all. We had a little quick one today. You know, we got a Christmas party to go to. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do something else. We ain't gonna tell all do? our business. We ain't gonna tell all our business. No, tell them where you going right now. Where the fuck are we going? What you did, what you decided to do with that trip. We're going to Hong Kong and TJ, right? Tonight? Oh yeah, yeah. We're going to Hong Kong and TJ go eat some Chinese food. With him. Bear, taking me tonight, yeah. yeah Bear I said, need a passport. I said, where are we going? He said, Hong Kong. I go, whatever you want. <laughs> you, you, have, you never been to Mexico, huh? Mexico. Yeah. I fought there with Tony, Mexico Tony Ferguson, City. Mexico oh, Tony, City. Oh, did, did, did the uh, people there, did they walk up to you speaking Spanish? Yeah, all the time. All the time, I can tell. If I, if I come with that mustache, <laughs> they come with mustache they go, Spanish all day. But you can understand a little Spanish though, huh? Yeah. It's kind of like Portuguese a little bit. If, if, if you're like... They speak slow. I can understand pretty yeah. much everything. Yeah, I've seen it before. I've seen uh, yeah. one of my Brazilian friends speak to one of my Mexican friends, and the Mexican was speaking Spanish, and the Brazilian yeah. was speaking Portuguese, and they was understanding each other. They call Portunhol, like mix of Portuguese and, and a Spanish. Bit of both. Yeah. Bro, that fucked me up. They did that. Why? <laughs> you know, I like languages. I wish yeah. I was uh, bilingual. You don't speak Spanish? You hablo español muy bien. No, no, hablo español. I see. You speak Portuguese? <laughs> no fala Portuguese. You just spoke it. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. You spoke it. That's all I know. You probably know some curse words. I know. Right? I know, know curse words. In, in Portuguese? Oh, yeah. What do you know? Shubin me pala. Oh, come on. Shubin me bola. What's that mean? Don't, don't tell me. Is it bad? Shubin me pala. What's that mean? Suck my dick. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We out of here, baby. Hey, RDA, we want to thank you for coming. Join us today on Jackson, thank man. You, man. You the man, baby. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>